pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Review and approve the council agenda. I'll make a motion that uh, we approve the agenda as written. Second. For a discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed unanimously. Consent agenda items. Item A, approve appointing Daniel Wiesbach to a part-time janitor at the library. Item B, approve public work seasonal hire. Item C, approve resolution for off-site gambling, St. Cloud Boxing and Wrestling Club. Item D, approve special animal request. Item E, approve temporary gambling license for American Cancer Society. Item F, approve 2 a.m. liquor license renewal for Hammer & Hammer Incorporated doing business as Friends Bar and Restaurant. Item G, approve change order number five for Rivers Edge Park phase three improvement project. Item H, approve change order number two final for the Rivers Edge Park phase three turf establishment project. Item I, approve change order number one, final for the 10th Avenue Improvement Project. Item J, approve preparation of plans and specifications for the 2020 Second Street North, 20 West and West Avenue Improvements. Item K, approve change order number four for Rivers Edge Park. Item L, approve beginning hiring process for maintenance worker. I'll move to approve. I'll second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed unanimously. Regular agenda items. This is a consideration of license revocation of Oriental Massage. Uh, I need a motion to open the public hearing. I'll make Don't. a motion. Second. Fine. All right. 632. 632. Uh, Paul, you got that? Or do you have anything on that? I guess, is there anyone here to speak of that? Is there anyone here to speak for or against that revocation of that license? Do you want a background? Oh. Okay. Maybe after we close the public Let's hearing. Let's close the public hearing and then discuss it. I'll move to close the public hearing, one at 633. Second. <laughs> Who seconded? I did. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Public meeting is closed at 633. Council, your wishes. Um, on that road, can we revoke this permanently, or do we have to revoke it for a period of one year? You have the uh, you have the authority under the ordinance to revoke it for a year. Up to That's a year. A, according to you. And then I believe, if there's any misconduct within that, and don't quote me if I'm wrong, and I'm looking at Dave, and I'm not sure if he knows the answer, but I believe if there's any misconduct. If anybody had some criminal convictions or anything like that, I think the therapists themselves have a longer <laughs> period of time of which they would not be able to be able to get a license within the city. But I think for your enterprise license, you can do it for a year. So each therapist at that location has to be mm -hmm. licensed. That's correct. Yep. Yes. So are we revoking all their licenses? You you only have the authority under this to be able to revoke the license of the enterprise. The business. The business. The business. That would be your f the first oh. step within that process, in that process. So can we come back and then revoke the licenses of all the therapists? Through I think that's a, a process. State. Well, they'd have to come back and get apply for a license for a new business, right? If He's asking about individual. The individual license. People would have to come back and ask for a license to go work for somebody. Well, the license them within the city you of we would have the ability to revoke each individual ones but i think the order of this would be to do the enterprise license first and what you'd have to do on the individuals is we'd have to determine whether or not we had any grounds um, upon those individuals that were licensed for a revocation of their license and if we did um, then we would be able to go and probably follow that same process um, for the revocation of the business license for that. Also, if any of them were ever convicted of a crime or any of those kinds of things within that period of time, I believe that we would have the ability to deny their to work. So we did, we did talk to Gordon about this previously, and I, I think we felt like we, you need to do the enterprise license first in the business 
that cannot be operating under that. If nothing else, it'll be something that we and then we'd have the, the new ordinance. We'd have the ability to do each individual therapist if we found some of them may not have been involved. We're we're not. Sh I'm not sure of all of those circumstances. We'd have to verify that with the police department in the reports that were done, if there were specific. But you do on on this. You have one of the owners. I'm assuming is one of the therapists as well. But I believe. But I believe you have to have an enterprise license to operate. You do, so but by revoking the enterprise business. license, you are in effect revoking the independent massage licenses as well, because they have to have a enterprise to work for. They but if sense. they would go to another massage therapist. Business and, yep. and asked to go to work there, would they have to reapply then for within the city of Way Park? Would they have to then, because we've already given them the license for a massage therapist, you would have to good. apply for a new license to go to work for they, this other business? What they would have to do is notify us that the, the business has to notify us of all of the massage therapists that work underneath that enterprise. Yep. So if they already are a licensed therapist within the city of Waite Park, they wouldn't necessarily have to come back and be re-get their license for their individual therapist license as long as that enterprise was licensed within the city. So your point is well taken in the sense that if there are any of those individuals that we can deem should have for the circumstances that are listed under the ordinance to have a revocation of their therapist license, we should consider doing that because then it would prevent them from going and doing exactly what you're talking about. Well, if, if I read the documentation and things that we received correctly, uh, we certainly have grounds to revoke individual therapist licenses as well. And I think we would be doing a disservice to the community to simply revoke the enterprise license. You have to do that first. Well, my motion would be to revoke the enterprise license for the maximum one year. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Second. Passed unanimously. Another one bites the dust. And be aware there's a couple more coming. <laughs> Fortunately, yes. So at what point do we go back and... and talk about revoking the individual massage licenses. I that would be the next step that we would be able to take because there's a, there's a formal process of doing that license revocation that we have to go through just like we did with the license revocation. I hope we so we will do step. that. Isn't that kind of up to your own investigation of who was partaking? Because you got to sort that out a little bit. Yeah, I would think that would come. For on too. each individual that might have been employed there. You can't just... Right. Revoke them all because they have right. worked in yeah, all the We need to start the process to look yeah. at each one individually and make that decision. Right. And my fear is that if we just do this and we don't put the other one on the agenda or, or on our, our activity report, we're not going to get into it. We need to take care of the whole thing, not just yeah. one part. All I right. want to see the whole just like Mike taken care of. Item B. Approved plans and specs for 2018 Granite View Road Improvement, or 2019 Granite View Road Improvement Project, not authorized advertising for bids. John? Yeah, Mayor, members of the council, um, <clears throat> here tonight to present the plans for our Granite View Road, kind of a reclaim and widening project. And the plans uh, admittedly are fairly boring for a project like this, so I'm, I'm just going to put the typical section up uh, unless you have any further questions. but. Essentially, this project is from the roundabout at the, at the interchange down to Carney Road 6, reclaiming the existing bituminous and gravel, using that material, kind of pushing it over into the ditches to widen out the road base, and then we'd bring in an entire new road section, new gravel, new bituminous. Um, <clears throat> in the end, we'll have two 12-foot paved drive lanes and two-foot gravel shoulders on either side, so we will have widened the roadbed by four to six feet, depending on the existing conditions out there. Um, of note on this project, there is a, a, a trout stream that we need to w extend the culverts in order to get a good, safe uh, uh, ditch in slope. Uh, we're having to go through a permitting process with the DNR that is still underway, and so we'd be essentially asking the council to consider uh, approving the plans and authorizing advertisement 
but we would wait until we get that permit in place before we took that next step. Uh, project cost estimate, <clears throat> we are estimating construction to be approximately $532,000 and a total project cost of approximately $670,000. Both are pretty close to what we've been kind of tracking from the planning process here. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Council, questions or your wishes? Move to approve. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed unanimously. <clears throat> and John, restriping the 7th Street South. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, so the county, uh, 7th Street South from 2nd Avenue to 10th Avenue has, has done a chip seal on it. Uh, so it needs to be restriped, uh, which gives us the opportunity to consider, you know, it could be restriped back to its original condition or the opportunity is there to restripe it as a three lane roadway as I have shown up on the, the screen there. Um, benefits of the three lane roadway is you, you get kind of a, a striped shoulder for uh, bike lanes, a um, little bit of improved safety for the crosswalks at the school there, uh, as well as some traffic calming. The narrower lanes have a tendency to slow cars down a little bit. So um, for your consideration is to, to restripe it for a three lane. Of note on the figure, we are showing a double solid line. The county was not agreeable to that. So the one departure from our figures, we wouldn't have, be having the double solid line, but in general, it'd be your typical three lane roadway striping configuration if the council wanted to move in that direction. Is this, is this something that'll help slow the traffic down out there? Yeah, you know, it's uh, traffic calming. You, the narrower the lane, um, the cars have a tendency to, to slow down. And so we would, we would anticipate, uh, it's, although it's not completely foolproof, but those narrower lanes should have a, a, a minor benefit in slowing traffic down. That should, traffic moves really fast. Should though. protect the buses too from turning in there then, right? Yeah. Center lane. Yep, yeah, and then like I said, it, it pinches the drive lanes to this, you know, more to the, not the center of the road, because that's where the opposing left turn lane is, but it does provide a kind of a bike lane on either side. Uh, that said, the county didn't want to actually stripe it and sign it as a bike lane. They would just have that kind of striped and then no parking signage. So as far as the chip coding, there's four spots where it says school crossing right now. Is the county going to come back and fill those in? Because I, if you restripe it this way. Yes, those are going back in. Okay. And they're actually... But on either end of there, you can see the school crossing included in that. Yeah, I was just going to ask a moment. Mm -hmm. mm. And is there going to be signage kind of telling people that this has changed? Um, like I said, there'd, there'd be some no parking signs added. Um, it, it's a county road, so we'd probably have to defer to them if they were going to put up some advanced kind of informational signage. Typically with a change like this, it's not a real drastic change. It's not like adding a stop sign or something where, you know, I, I don't anticipate a whole lot of traffic confusion based on this restriping. So when do you think this project would go? Um, I don't have that handy, but typically trip seals are done when the weather's still warm. So I would imagine it's uh, probably before school starts here. Okay. Would, would there be any indication on 137 coming in either from the west or the east? that the road is gonna narrow down to two lanes? Uh, we could look into, again, this maybe goes back to Councilmember Schmidt's question. We could look into some, maybe some signage on that side of that intersection uh, to indicate that that's gonna change. Well, just to kind of go on what Vic is saying here is, you got two lanes coming in from the west and you got two lanes coming in from the left. I think it should be arrowed properly that through traffic goes into the traffic lane and makes. Yeah, it, it, it could be a scenario lane. where we want to look at adding some striping arrows on the west side of the intersection, making that inside lane a left turn lane and the uh, right. the right lane a right the, through lane would probably be. The other be. lane would be a right straight. Yep. And same on the other way. Correct, yeah. You I, would make um, the inside lane would be straight, I think, if I was looking yeah. at it right. Yeah. Yes. And the left lane, well, it's not, it's a single lane highway or road now, but you'd have to split that because it is wide enough for two lanes. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, I, th I think I think that's probably a good comment and appropriate to look at some striping adjustments at the two ends of that. Uh, kind right. Of, kind of creating left versus through lanes or, or right, right lanes. Right, make sure that the lane of traffic that's going to hit that single lane is at least pretty close Reasonably to the lined, lined up. Reasonably lined up, yep. Yep, I agree um, with that. Because if you leave at least that side, then you would be putting it right into that third lane. And um, on that east side, maybe make the last 100 feet straight left turn rather than the split arrow, both way direction, if you slide Oh, it. yeah, yep. I'd, so I'd, make that a left turn lane only for the last 100 feet or whatever it is. Um, and the right single lane would be straight and right to stop the Correct. confusion. Yep. Because you know it's gonna happen. <laughs> no, I, For the first amount of time anyway, they're gonna to try to use that. Yep. No, that those place. are great comments, so we'll get those communicated to the county um, for them to And by discovery this. there also, where the bus goes in and out, you've got the same arrow indicators right and left there. Um, is there gonna be a problem? on either one of those two intersect or uh, entrances? See your arrow indicators there? Yeah, yeah, we just have the kind of consistent, you know, opposing left turn lane through there. Um, I guess my ma the, the main bus entrance is on the far east side of it there. They come in on the east? Yeah, right, right there. there. Um, Does that mean they exit on the west one? Well, that's probably I, yes and no. That's where they <laughs> exit. You know, they come in and out, but the majority of the bus traffic, I believe, comes in from the east because that's the way they have it striped in the back. Okay. Um, I'll have our transportation engineer take a look at that bus turning with that thought. Uh, that said, I I'm almost thinking maybe this is appropriate, and I don't see any major conflicts. But I'll I'll, I'll have that conversation with them and have him have him think about that a little bit further. All right, Council, your wishes. I want to move to approve the uh, restriping of 7th Street South from 2nd Avenue to 10th Avenue as presented. I think it's a really good plan. I'll second that. Further discussion? All in favor? Do you want to add any uh, ads for the end, east and west end to make sure that they're oh, he'll, he'll oh, it'll it'll the case can do it'll that. It'll happen. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed unanimously. Item D, National League of Cities Service Line Warranty Program Agreement. Um, what, what you have before you um, is an agreement um, that if the city enters into, um, it provides an opportunity for residential property owners in the community to be able to get an type of insurance policy for water and sewer lines. Um, it's a program that is endorsed by the National League of Cities and then administered by a company called Utility Service Partners. And uh, it's the only program, um, from what I understand, that is endorsed by the National League of Cities and then again also by the League of Minnesota Cities. Um, there's really no cost or liability for the city to participate. We do get a small portion of revenue that comes back to us if, if we do get individuals to, to participate in that. Um, and so they take care of um, all of that, um, this is something that um, Bill had brought forward um, with given um, a couple years ago when we had the freezing of water lines and things like that. We had a lot of property owners that ended up with some significant costs, and so we felt that maybe this would be a, a, a good program to offer to them. Um, it would be up to them. It's all voluntary, so it's completely just up to them if they want to do it, um, but it does require agreement from the from the city to move forward and they do all of the billing for the they residents. do yep no. that's <coughs> how strange is nobody mark? go ahead mike how is this marketed to the citizens so that the, everybody is aware of it is that going to be done by us or is it no. the company they take care of all of that they they take care of all of that sure they'll send letters to yep. every property owner they yep no public funds are used in marketing distribution or administration of this program um but they want to make sure that they have our, you know, that we have an agreement with us to be able to, um, so that they can contact those, those residents to offer this program to them. 
It's strange no other city in Minnesota has done it yet. There are other cities in Minnesota that have done it, just not in this particular area. It's a sample. There, Alex oh, there's has over it. 400. Yeah. Well, you'd think they'd list something in Minnesota. Um, I thought well, I saw are. it. There's I got to look on there. there. Yeah, look. There's looking another sheet. Looking at the list I'm looking at. No, there's a whole not, there's another, another one. There's another one right? I thought here. Hold on. Yeah, I was looking at that too. Uh, there's a current list of Minnesota partners is right here. There's, oh, a, okay. there's several. It's just on the other sheet that, that yeah. Bill had included. Yeah. I, I don't recognize any that Rochester, Edina, St. Louis Park, Richfield, Columbia Heights, St. Michael, Mounds View, Grand, Grand, Grand Rapids, Watertown, Cannon Falls, Falcon Heights, Mora, Purim, Holly, Pelican Rapids, Brownsdale, Vergas, Vesta, New Brighton, and Lake Crystal. I got to believe it's probably just not an awareness of it um, because I think if they got into it and looked into it, I think there would be probably more. Well, I don't see any downside with it. The really homeowner isn't. can say, yeah, we want it or no, we don't. Right. Yeah, they talk about everything but the premiums. but I didn't know what the premiums are either. Well, the um, premiums are in there. It, probably if you had all three of them, it would be less than $24 a month. Counselor, your wishes? Well, I'll move to approve the program. I'll second that. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed unanimously. All right, approve bills. I'll make a motion that we approve the bills. Second. May I ask just one question? Sure. Yeah. When I was reading it, I noticed that we titled two cars. We paid for titles to two cars. Why do we do that? We didn't have to do that. We have to do that when we take it over as a forfeiture and then when we sell it, it goes back okay. to whoever. Yeah, I was just curious about that. Yeah. Thank you. Was there a second? Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Frank had seconded it. <laughs> Four to one. Did somebody vote against him? Me. Oh. Rick voted bills. no not to pay oh, the did? bills. <laughs> <laughs> public input summary. There was no public input uh, today at 615, so the summary is there isn't any summary. John, do you have anything? Uh, the only thing is, is I'm going to be submitting um, the registrations tomorrow for the coalition's conference. So I have down Rick and Mike at this point, and I just wanted to verify if, if there any of the rest of you are interested. Speak now or forever. Hold your peace. Are you going? Um, I'm up in the air yet. I'm trying to decide if I can afford to be out. You will. Yeah. I just will. Yeah. That's the, through the 11th is the block, so you're still good. All right, anything else? If not, we are adjourned at 6.53.